meetings with the neighborhoods commission who's going to do a presentation. So he got the lights back on. He can turn them back off. So I want those lights on so you can see, but this is good enough here. But is, is this just for that back there? So this does not make it any clearer for anybody to hear, does it? Your mic's not on. It's not, it's not turned on. That's all. So yeah, that's a trick. You turn it on. Right. So all the other speakers are holding it up close and it didn't do any good. Let me move this closer here, though, if you please. Because the mouse only reaches so far, or my hands only reach so far. So hi, I'm Larry Ames, uh, chair of the San Jose Neighborhoods Commission. I'm also an aerospace engineer, so I don't know how to speak unless I have my PowerPoint and my laser pointer. So I'm sat here, but I'm not used to microphones. So if you can't hear me, let me know. Um, do it like this. Sing, sing my way. I am not a singer. Okay, so um, the Neighborhoods Commission. It's uh, a new commission in the city of San Jose, and it's kind of unique. Uh, our charter is uh, to integrate the voice of the neighborhoods into the city's decision-making process. And we are an advisor to the city council regarding issues of the San Jose neighborhoods. Uh, we study issues, course, and give courses of action, policies, and programs that affect neighborhood quality of life. We make recommendations to the mayor and city council, and our purpose is to empower the neighborhoods. And this projector doesn't show very well the history of this thing. Um, in 2002, San Jose had the Strong Neighborhoods Initiative. It was to help areas that needed some extra help to avoid blight, and uh, it covered roughly a third of the city. There were different parcel, different regions of the city fixed up as Strong Neighborhoods Initiative there. They had a uh, project advisory committee that organized the different strong neighborhoods and it worked on they worked for about five years and accomplished a fair amount of stuff and they realized that it was a good way for those neighborhoods to get information from the neighborhoods to the city when this program ended as a five-year program the action council recommended that the thing be made that there that the community input be made permanent and so that is how the Neighborhoods Commission came about. It was a follow-on to the uh, Strong Neighborhoods Initiative, but one that represents the whole city and not just certain areas of the city. <coughs> and uh, they started out with a pilot program. This is new to the city here. I believe it's new throughout quite a large area. It, so we started out with a pilot program. It started in about 2008. It, was supposed to, it took us about a year to get set up for the city to figure out the process to get us seated. But in 2009, we started a uh, two-year pilot program, which uh, they didn't quite figure out what to do with us, so they extended the pilot program, and then they extended the program. But uh, it was finally made uh, permanent in 2013. In uh, 2014, we had a the first caucus to collect, to select the candidates, to select the commissioners for the odd number districts. And next year we'll have a caucus process to uh, select the commissioners for the even districts. And in August of 14, uh, August of 2014, we had our first meeting as a real process. You want me to get closer here? I'm getting all sorts of echoes. Go ahead, I can hear. Okay, is that, oh, it's, it has a different tone now. It is better. Okay, so now I don't have to hold it quite so close, and I can talk more normally. No, please do. Talk normally? No, hold it closer. Hold it closer. So, I want to explain, there's neighborhoods, there's neighborhoods commission, there's united neighborhoods, and there's neighborhood leadership groups. So let me explain how they all work together. So there are neighborhoods of all, all of across the city. Uh, different sizes, different makeups. All of those within a district can meet to discuss regional, regional interests within that district. This group here represents anybody from District 5 is welcome to come. In uh, District 6, we have representatives from all the different neighborhoods that we meet uh, 
four times a year and talk about things that affect us. So I hear that fireworks is a big issue for, in, over here. In our area, we're much, very much impacted by the designs of the, how they put the baseball stadium in there, traffic patterns from that, Dif different issues. So that doesn't bother you much here, but different areas. We share information and ideas, but it's an informal, informal get-together. There is a group called United Neighborhoods of Santa Clara County. Uh, groups from all across the county can participate in it. It's county-wide, so you have people from Mountain View and Morgan Hill in it also. It is uh, not a formal group. I mean, it, mean it, it meets, but it does not have official power with the city. It's, it's for information exchange. They also uh, provide training to help uh, neighborhoods figure out how to uh, operate better. They also provide uh, services. They uh, have um, insurance policy to help the, uh, when neighborhoods want to put on events like a, a block party or a hot dog roast or something like that. They provide the insurance for that. And then there's the neighborhoods commissions. So each of the neighborhoods, each of the commissioners represent, we don't represent any one neighborhood, we rep represent the whole, all the neighborhoods within the district. So I'm in District 6, I represent all of the neighborhoods in District 6. There's two representatives from each of the council districts, so there are 20 commissioners in the city on this commission. And uh, we are unique in that uh, we are selected by the community. We have a thing called a caucus process where uh, all the neighborhoods get together at a special meeting. Each one sends a delegate. Uh, they go through a caucus process where they interview the various candidates and then they, represent, they select two commissioners that are then formally approved by the city council and become on the commission. And this projector doesn't show it all at all well, but there are the 10 districts in the city, and there are the 20, council, uh, 20 commissioners. And I want to recognize Nick Bobowski here from District 10 at the southern end of town. And uh, Juan Estrada is your, one of your representatives. And uh, Pete Colstead is from downtown. I happen to be from uh, District 6, a little to the uh, western part of town. So I'm going to explain uh, city government to you. Uh, city, uh, city of San Jose, we have the mayor and city council. Uh, they, they're the ones you talk to all the time, but they just, they come up with the rules. They establish policies. We have a city manager. It's, it's called a mayor and manager government. The city manager is the one that actually runs the city. The mayor and city council, they do not control anybody except the manager. They, they appoint, the, they hire and can fire the city manager, and that's the only one that they can do. The city manager is the one that hires and fires everybody else throughout the city. City manager gives reports back to the city council. City council gives advice to the city manager. That's this exchange here. There are various departments in the city. There's a parks department. There's a library department. There's a, all these different departments, they are all under control of the city manager. There are various commissions throughout the city. There is a parks commission, there's a library commission, there's an arts commission, and they interact with the different city departments. Uh, the, the commissions, the city commissions, the parks commission and so forth, those are the citizens. These are the, the blue is staff, the yellow is the elected officials, the thing is that uh, the commissioners in almost all these commissions are appointed by the, by the city council members. Each council member appoints one person to represent them on the library commission. Or each council member appoints one person to represent them on the parks commission. So it doesn't show up on here, but there are 10 little circles representing the 10 council members. There are 10 little circles down here. Each one is appointed by that. Uh, they kind of echo the opinions of the council members. So there is public input. These are volunteers, citizens, and they 
do interact with the departments, but there is some control like that. The Neighborhoods Commission is different. We are not appointed by the council members. We are selected through this public caucus process by the neighborhoods. So if my council member likes me or doesn't like me, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have a say in it. He, I'm selected by the neighborhoods. And we then can give the information back to our individual council member. We can give the information back to the whole city. We get information from the city manager and we work back with it. But we represent all of you. We come to these meetings here and hopefully you have exchanged with through the district you have exchanged through the, uh, you have a, what is it, District 5 United, is that what the name is? Uh, anyhow, a way of, of communicating back and forth there. So, um, all this effort to make beautiful PowerPoint that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't show up on your projector here. Sorry about that. But anyhow, uh, there are different ways of communications. Our purpose is to communicate. So uh, we get information from the city council, I mean, from the city, through the city um, staff, the city departments, they come and give briefings to the Neighborhoods Commission. We pass information out to the different neighborhoods. We give reports to you. We try to share information out. We also collect information from the community. We're here to listen and share information back up to the city. Sometimes we have facilitated events uh, where the, like with the uh, city, the drones, the police helicopter, the little, um, uh, what do you call it, unmanned, um, UAV, unmanned, U aerial. unmanned aerial surveillance system, UAS, UAS, um, where we held public meetings where the police department got the information that we helped facilitate it. Uh, sometimes we serve as a focus group. The departments will come and talk to us, get community input, some input from us, revise their presentations, and then give it to the public. One thing we don't want to be is just sit, sit there in the audience and have the uh, departments come by and say we brief the public because they talk to us. We don't want to just be a box that they check. And uh, also we don't want to just hold meetings where public comes and talks to us and then we don't pass the information on. So if that happens, we don't do those. So last year, we actually did a fair number of things. Uh, the city had a policy 0.4 that talked about the format of the different commissions, how they put the format of their bylaws and agendas and outreach policies. So we read that and gave input on that. We were very much involved of oh, uh, the Valley Transportation Authority. We weighed in on the Holland Rock BART station. Um, we heard that they suddenly decided with little public input to change their designs. We did not actually weigh in on the design itself, but we weighed in on the process by which they chose to change designs without public input. Then there's the unmanned aerial systems, the drones, we spent a fair amount of time reviewing the city budget and giving input on that. And then fireworks. <laughs> so yes, you get to hear about fireworks one more time. We sent in recommendations to the city council that they uh, also have uh, community service officers help with the firework. Uh, what fire inspectors can come up. Anybody with a badge can walk around and intimidate a fair number of people and say, don't do it, you know, but they don't have to be able to arrest them. And if there is a problem with them, then you call the police, but the police don't have to make, the police don't have to do everything. They can be, have other things. We also recommended that they uh, make a few prominent arrests three or four days beforehand in order to scare people on that. Um, hope it, it did make the city's top five or 10, whatever priority list, and they're gonna work on it for, uh, hopefully before the, New Year's. We are trying to work on what we are working on next year. We have to come up with a work plan. That's our main topic for this next month. We've had a subcommittee that has met and has come up with it. We started out with a list of 30 or 40 different things we could do. We know we can do five or 10 in a year, so we're trying to figure out how to get the 30 or 40 down to five or 10 things that we can do. 
and we're here to see if there are other things that we might have missed so we can get more information. So uh, we looked at the city's top 10 things. We got suggestions from the, uh, the different commissioners. Like I say, we'll be meeting on August. We'll get additional community input. If you have things that you want to talk about, talk, talk to Juan. Let him know so that he can bring it forward to us. Once we come up with the work plan, it has to be approved by city council. And things, work plans tend to change over time. I mean, last year we had no idea that the drones were going to be a big issue. Um, we're in the middle of a drought. Watch it suddenly start to rain and have flooding be an issue. I don't know what, what will happen on the, over the year. It may be overtaken by events. But nonetheless, it's, we know that some things have to be done throughout the year, and it helps to schedule these things. We work on a, a variety of different things. So part of our charter is not to do the work that other departments do. So there is already a parks department, so we do not get involved with parks. There's already a planning department, we don't get involved in that. There is no budget, depart, uh, budget commission. So we do work on budget, we work on code enforcement, community engagement, public safety, transportation. Then the housekeeping was how we deal with our, our own internal affairs. We don't have to do one project in each category, but we do try to spread our efforts around. And so possible things that we might work on next year. So one thing we have to work on is the policy by which we do the caucuses. I mean, I'm up, our District 6 is up for a new person, so somebody has to figure out how to do the actual caucus process there. We're going to work on the city budget. Most likely we'll get involved with uh, help the police department again. Last year, helped them with the drones. This year, they are now having uh, body-worn cameras. So what is the policies for the data? Who gets to see it? How long is it kept? That needs public input and feedback on that. We're documenting the process by which we make decisions, how we get information, how we put items on the agenda. That's sort of one of the housekeeping things and the communications and outreach, how we connect, how we communicate to the city. One of the reasons I'm here today is trying to outreach. Our meetings are open to the public. We meet generally the second Wednesday of every month, except July and December at 6.30 at City Hall. Usually, sometimes they move us to different locations, so please check the city website. And there, we have information on a, on a webpage, neighborhoodscommission.com. Let's see, who set that up? Is, is that yours? Who set up neighborhoodscommission.com? Oh, you did. Okay, yeah. So it's a informal website. There's a formal website that has the official minutes that says we started meeting at a certain time, ended at a certain time, and doesn't say much else. So we have informal notes that have a lot more detail. And uh, feel free to ask me questions. Uh, that's my website. Okay, and uh, questions? Terry, Terry. So it was a question about how to have public outreach on flood and water conservation at the same time, that even if it rains, we still have to be cautious about waters. So that, would that be a, like a presentation from the water district, Santa Clara Valley Water District, well, perhaps? I mean, I know how the interface of the Neighborhoods Commission to the community outreach is going to be Several different directions if it's going to be effective. So, water district, 
maybe neighborhoods commission, maybe parks, um, but I just see it as an issue that maybe should be discussed before we hit it. So I think that's a suggested topic yeah. yes. for the work plan. Right. Yeah, okay, noted, thank you. Oh, my name is L A M E S at A O L dot com. Is that the last standing AOL address in the entire world? It was the first <laughs> one. It was too. the first one. You notice it did not have any numbers on yeah. it because I was the, one of the very first one. I've kept it for 25 years, I think. Okay. <laughs> and it's getting cranky now, but it still works. Any other questions? Can I make a comment about commissions in general? Sure. Uh, uh, I've been on the Neighborhood Commission for about a year, I'm next to Washington District 10, and uh, been an active in the community for about 22 years living in San Jose on neighborhood issues. So when I heard about the Neighborhood Commission and becoming a formalized commission, it was highly interesting to me. I was looking at some of the other commissions, and all of them have an important charter, uh, some, some critically important, some uh, uh, socially important, some budgetarily important, like the there's an airport commission that handles all things related to the airport. Uh, this one had particular significance uh, to where my heart lives and where I physically live, and where my family lives. So um, that's why I really want to be a part of it. I've been on about a year. So I encourage uh, folks to look at the city of San Jose website, uh, sanjoseca.com. You know, just type in commissions or commission into the box. The search. Look at the various commissions that are uh, that are looking for volunteers or looking for representation in your district. If you're interested, there's a process for all of them. I think ours, like Larry pointed out, is the one that has a caucus process, which is a somewhat of a voting process. Uh, I think you said the other ones are appointed, I believe, by the council, council member. So uh, you can apply for the commission. Uh, and sometimes they go foul. Sometimes there's a, a an, an empty slot on a uh, commission to that parks. I, I live right next to. I'd really like to have some input on what happens in my district and across the city on parks. Get on the commission, and that's a good place to live. Now, the, the, those of uh, which are all volunteer positions are not uh, compensated in any way, shape, or form. It's a sworn city position. You're official, officially sworn in so that you uh, understand the laws and respect to what you have to do as, as a, a part of uh, the a formal part of the city process, uh, not as a city employee. We're not city employees. Um, but I encourage folks to look at the commissions and uh, see where it may fit in with you, because we have nothing but community volunteer types in this room. These are activist people here in this room. Uh, so I encourage you to look at those. I like this commission a lot. I've uh, enjoyed my time there. I'll be on it for another year until somebody throws me out of this, or I get uh, reappointed. But I'll have it back over I was going to say, uh, besides Guam, the other commissioner is uh, Kathleen McGavers, who's uh, another community yeah, and District 5, and I, I just want to say um, thank you to Larry, who is the chair of the Neighborhoods Commission, and um, I'm not sure if you covered this, but I think uh, all four of us that were here are here as Neighborhoods Commissioners. Um, what we did was, a couple of years ago, along with others, realized that the commission at that time was doing a lot of talking and not, a, not really walking the walk and taking action. And so uh, I, I'm very proud to serve on the commission. Larry uh, pointed out some of our accomplishments in the past year, which was issuing a recommendation for the use of police drones, uh, quickly drafting a recommendation uh, urging the council to adopt an emergency ordinance on fireworks, uh, taking action on the homelessness situation, and other things. And so it, it's a very important time. I think we all look forward to further accomplishments this year. Uh, and that what that means is uh, listening to the community, acting on important causes, issuing recommendations, holding meetings, or doing something to make a difference. And so uh, I, I thank Larry as the chair for uh, leading us down that path. And um, the main thing is to communicate with us. So you have, Juan, you have your website too. So share information with Juan and uh, he'll come forward to us. Okay, any other questions? I thank you much for coming then. So I was the first time on the agenda. Um, one more thing before we leave this.
um, there is a survey on District 5 United where you can put information on you know, what you'd like the Neighborhoods Commission to look at. So any ideas and input you have, we have a survey on there. You can fill it out and it'll go straight to the commission for that. And I just peeked and there have been about 250 responses. Larry will get all that information in about a week. We might Larry. not be able to fill all 250. <laughs> And then from Park Pleasant, right? Yes, Park Pleasant from Park Pleasant Neighborhood, Neighborhood Association. Um, Association. Yes. Um, Norma has uh, something 